Okay, so I just want to talk to you about using your buttonhole function on your sewing machine. Um, if you have a four step buttonhole, your foot will look like this and it has a little slider in the middle and it has a bar at the front and this is where the machine will clip onto it just like any of the other feet. If you have a one step buttonhole, your foot will probably look like this and it has this strange contraption at the back. If I press it, push it up, it fits the button into that little slot and you, ooh, and you close it um, to hold the button in place so it doesn't fall out. Other than that, it is the same. It has the little slider that goes up and down in the middle and the bar on the front for the machine to clip onto. So the first thing we're going to do is to take our normal foot off. So press the button at the back and drop the foot off. With your lever, if you push it up, you can actually lift the shank higher. Okay, so have a go at that. When you pop your buttonhole foot underneath, you may have to lift that shank a bit higher to place it underneath. And then you pop it down just like you would with the putting on any other foot. I tend to turn the wheel once and just bring the thread underneath and catch it, pull it through underneath so that they're both between the foot and the plate rather than having the top thread from the top. Okay, you're going to change your stitch to the buttonhole. I'm going for number 16. Um, this machine has a one step buttonhole so it is really easy. I literally, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to let the machine automatically um, choose everything. I'm going to place my fabric under and you will be amazed at how easy this is. So I'm lowering my lever down. The buttonhole sews from the front backwards. Don't ask me why. Everything else comes forward. Buttonhole sew backwards. Um, so you're just going to place your fabric under. I'm going to put my foot down and it's going to stitch it. Now if you have a four step buttonhole and this foot, you're going to watch it. So I'm going to talk you through what it's doing and tell you when you would change stitch and you would watch it as it comes up the side. You would watch this measurement to see where to stop. You'll see there's a little line here. You'll see where it's in line when you've decided how big your buttonhole is going to be. You would watch it until the line matches. Okay. You need to choose that before you get going. So with this machine, we're going to start, and you'll see in this little window, it'll show you which bit it's stitching. <coughs> if you had a four-step buttonhole, you would have it on step one slash three at the moment. Okay, it's normally one, three, two, and four. So you're on one, three at the moment. We're going to start. Okay, so it's done a little zigzag across the front, and now it's going to start going back on the left-hand side. So you would at this point, you do the little zigzag at the front and you would twist it to number two if you had the, the four step buttonhole. It's going to stitch backwards. If it does this, it's because you have forgotten to pull the buttonhole lever down. Very important. Um, there we go shows that even after many many years you get caught up and you forget to do things so the buttonhole will not work unless the lever is pulled down this lever measures the size of the buttonhole so because we have the button in the back it's going to go the foot is going to move forward and it's going to hit the back the lever will hit the back and that will tell the machine how big your buttonhole is if you have the four step buttonhole, you won't have this issue. But if your machine beeps, it's because you forgot to pull this extra lever down. So just pull it down, okay, and off you go, carry on. Okay, so it's hit the back, it's now gone across. Now, if you had a four step buttonhole, you would let it slide up till you got the position you wanted. You would stop and then you would put it to number three. 
and it would do the zigzag across the back. This machine is now going to come forward and it's going to come all the way forward with a running stitch and then it's going to zigzag back to create the fourth side. Um, you would put it onto the, if you had a four step, you would put it onto the number three step, which would do the zigzag at the back and then to number four and it would stitch the last leg. stops all by itself you lift it up pull it out and there is your beautiful buttonhole okay in essence all I've done is put the fabric under put my foot down and it's done it all itself I haven't actually I've stopped and started and it will stop and carry on from where it was um, but really I have done absolutely nothing myself I've just put my foot down okay um, we're going to put a pin across one end because we need to open this gap. So we're going to take our unpicker and we're going to poke it in, in between the threads, and we're going to slide the unpicker up. There we go, and it's opened our buttonhole. If we didn't have the pin across the top, it's very easy to cut straight through that end thread and then your buttonhole would fall, fall apart. Okay, so there's our completed button. Um, get a piece of fabric, just try it out. It's not as scary as it seems, I promise you. Um, have a play, you can't go horribly wrong. If it does go wrong for some reason, um, the best idea if you want to start again is always reset it, so change the stitch and go back to it um, so that it doesn't start halfway through the buttonhole. Okay, so have a play, be brave, good luck. <laughs>